This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Jason Bayless wants to know, was JR heading up talent relations when the incident happened with Henry Godwin in the yellow D where he broke his neck, taking the flip version of the doomsday device and, uh, uh, the first show back, they wanted him to do the flip again. And he threatened to quit. If the finish wasn't changed, does any of that ring a bell? I guess this is a story that Henry has told over the years. Uh, I think I, I remember the injury. I don't know what my role in the company was at that specific time. I think you were talent relations because that would have been after JJ had left. Yeah. Then I was there. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at it at that time, like it's just a, uh, freak thing, but, uh, you know, Mark, Mark Canterbury, AKA Henry Godwin was not comfortable taking that bump anymore. And so all you do is just, you don't make it a big deal. You just move off that point and move on, figure out something fucking else. Hawking animal. You're guzzling people. Anyway, you're going over. Right. So what the fuck do you care? You know, you're being fed talents to, to, to embellish your persona. If you're not smart enough to figure out a a finish number two or three, well, we got issues. And, but normally Hawk and, and animal were of the, of the mindset that we're versatile. We're not just muscle heads. We can do more than this. And so they come up with something else, but, uh, I would have, I would have been right there with Henry. If you got hurt before and you don't want to do it again, we ain't doing it. And if the road warriors have an issue with, with deviating from their finish, that finish, uh, then we'll address it with them and we'll, and we're still not going to do it. There's nothing they can say, oh, we're going to quit. If we can't do our finish, well, then fucking go have at it. Remember you got to no compete for 90 days. So, uh, but yeah, it just, I, I was, I, I was there and, and look, uh, Henry was one of the most popular guys on our roster. He was a popular guy. He was fun to be around. He was hardworking. He was reliable, very reliable, big, powerful athlete. Goddamn, what a defensive lineman he would have made. Big, good feet, fast. Uh, so, uh, but no, to protect the talent and the company, we ain't doing it. Now, uh, uh, so what, are the, what part of that road warriors do you not understand? And that's how you had to deal with those guys. Cause they would, they would, they're like great poker players. They put their bluff in could be a little intimidating, but we still, were not going to go down that road. Lindsay writes, Jim, do you have a favorite and least favorite gimmick match? By the way, shout out to Lindsay. You know, we have a 2% female listenership here on the podcast. So Lindsay's representing our 2% for us. Jim, great. do you have a favorite or a least favorite gimmick match? Least favorite would probably be the scaffold match. Yeah, that's terrible. Great call. Uh, least favorite that and most favorite. Well, I used to like the Texas death matches, but and we've seen some good ones that match that, that John Moxley had with, uh, Lance Archer, I thought was classic, but they, we've changed the rules so many times. The Texas death match used to be, uh, any number of falls. And I remember in the old days, you, you read about, uh, Dory Funk senior having a match with 20 falls. And then the, the match ends when one person can't continue, but we kind of doctored that up a little bit. So I like, uh, I don't like the scaffold match. I used to like the, the, the Texas death match a little bit more than I do now. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't know what, a, what you'd say in a gimmick match. Uh, we do so much, uh, in, in the business in general, that, and, and all those reels are generally are oftentimes watered down to, to appease the talents. Uh, I don't like cage matches where escaping the cage is a stipulation. I agree. That's the shits. So there's only a couple of three things I just don't really like. Uh, but other than that, you know, I don't have any major favorite, uh, where I jump for joy when I hear this stipulation is going to be put on television. 
if they're executed well, then I can go along with about pretty much anything as long as they're executed correctly. Uh, but the two that I don't like, I mentioned, so I have to think about that, but I, the best stipulation match, it, it really depends. It's the stipulations don't make the match, right? The talents make the match. So it all depends on who's in there. Who's, who's been booked that would determine how good a stipulation it was. Did you, did this fit your skill set? Is this some things that you can execute? So that's kind of where I look at that deal. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.